أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والفجر وليال عشر صدق الله العظيم <coughs> My dear respected elders and brothers الله سبحانه وتعالى has placed us in a very auspicious time. In the Islamic calendar, we have reached that time which is very special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala, like in many things, has given it fadilat, preference over other times. Preference over other things is something Allah ta'ala does. In our aqidah, we know that all the anbiya are haq and true. But the greatest of all the anbiya is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tilka rusulu faddanna ba'dahum ala ba'd. These are the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of them we have given them a higher purpose or a higher status than others. Places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives fadila and greatness over other places. Alhamdulillah due to the grace of Allah ta'ala we are praying here in Masjid Hamza. We will get great reward. But those who are praying in Mecca Mukarramah, in Medina Munawwara, and those who are playing in the Masjid Maqdis, the Bayt al Maqdis, they are getting high reward from us because of the fadilat and the greatness of the place. And sometimes Allah Ta'ala, He gives fadilat of time. All the months of the Islamic calendar are great, but nothing can compare to Ramadan. And in the same way of the great special days of the year, Allah Ta'ala has chosen these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah as those days which are very beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Very beloved. That's why many of the Mufassirin say that in Surah Al Fajr, where Allah Ta'ala takes Qasim and Allah Ta'ala He make, takes an oath, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is in no need, He is not Muhtaj, and He doesn't need to take an oath. That's why the ulama of tafsir have said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath, it is not only just to emphasize what he is saying, because that does not need to be done. Allah ta'ala speaking, the emphasis is there already. But it is to show the greatness of that thing that he is swearing upon. That thing which he is making an oath upon, that is the purpose. Wal fajr, the fajr salat in the morning, Allah ta'ala takes an oath on it. It's something which is very great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Quran al Fajr. I think the recitation of the Quran in the Fajr, it's very great in the eyes of Allah. Kana mashhuda. The malaika, they are there watching that qirat take place when the Imam 
is reading in the Fajr time, the angels are there, mashhood. They are there watching that Qirat and that Tilawah take place. Walayal and Ashr, and many of the Mufassirin say that this means the days of Dhul Hijjah, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah that Allah Ta'ala has promised upon them and shown the greatness of these 10 days. What is in these 10 days? Many of us who are here, some of us will be going for the Hajj, many have left already. So I'm going to speak first of all about those who are not going for Hajj, which is the better part of us who are here. First of all, in these 10 days fasting, these 10 days staying up at night and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these 10 days at to do the slaughtering of the animal, and in these 10 days on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, the fast of Arafat especially. These are the four main things with of course the takbirat of the ayam at tashriq we were making takbir from the 9th of Dhul Hijjah to the, of the Fajr to the Asr of the uh, 13th of Dhul Hijjah which will be from Thursday until the uh, about 23 prayers it takes about 23, 24 prayers we will do that and I'll explain about that also so these are the main things that we are going to do as-siyam in these 10 days we should try to fast we should try to keep roza. We should try to stay away from eating for a little while for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will be benefit for us. As Siyam wa Jannah. Nabi Sallam has said that the fast it is a shield. We need things to prevent us from doing sin. So one way is when we fast, it prevents us from doing sin. We know when we are saim and we are fasting, we have to, you know, they say walk on thin ice. We have to be more careful. Not only of staying away from food, but staying away from the sins and all these things. We have to be careful from that. So we should try to fast in these days. One hadith which the ulama have mentioned, in Targhib, Imam Mundri has mentioned also, and many muhaddithin have mentioned it, even though the standard is da'if, but because it's about thawab and reward, the ulama usually mention it in their kitabs, is that in these 10 days, a person who will fast one day, Inshallah, Allah Ta'ala give us that great reward. He will get the reward for one fast, a full year of fasting. One fast in these 10 days, he will get the reward of a full fast. So that is in regard to fasting every single day of the 10 days, except for the 10th. Because the ulama say, when they say 10 days, we mean 9. Uh, so on those first 9 days, of course, if we can't do it, we should try to fast to show the greatness of this day. The next thing we should think about is staying up at night and praying to Hajj. Waking up in the darkness of the night. One of the first advices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the Ansar of Medina was وَصَلُّوا bil wa nasun niyam. Pray at the night when people are sleeping. تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِالسَّلَامِ You will then enter Jannah with peace. So one of the great parts of the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ulama say, an intricate part of all of the salihin and those who are pious, and everybody who wants to get ta'alluq and connection and relationship with Allah ta'ala, one of the main ingredients of that, and one of the main nawafil, the extra ibadats that we have to do, which is not binding upon us, is the salat al-tahajjud, is that we should wake up when everybody is sleeping. And when we are sleeping also, and we should kick off those covers, crush our desires, and wake up at night in such a beautiful time, and worship Allah Ta'ala at that time. Brothers can move in inshallah, in space. We can move in, it's raining outside, so brothers have to come in. So we try to pray this Salatu Tahajjid. There was one hadithi barfu. One Sahabi says that he's heard it from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That on the day of Qiyamah, everyone will be gathered. Everyone will be gathered on the day of Qiyamah. And before any hisab, any type of judgment takes place, Allah Ta'ala will erect one person to call out, and it will be an angel of Allah Ta'ala, a munadi, person who is calling out, and he will call out to the people. First of all, he will say three calls. He will say, أَيْنَ الَّذِينَ يَحْمَدُونَ اللَّهَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Where are those people who used to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in happiness and in sadness as well. Where are they? Where are those people? 
which the ulama call al-radha bil qada to be happy with whatever Allah Ta'ala has ordained. It's a great, very great, high status of Iman. So where are these people? For Yaqumun, some people will get up, وَهُمْ قَلِيلٌ And they are only a few. And they will go into Jannah بِغَيْرِ hisab. Allah Ta'ala will say, go, go into Jannah. May Allah Ta'ala make us of them. Second, Elan will be made. أَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ أن, أن, uh, لَا, تج, لا, لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْنٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامَ السَّلَابِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ Into the end of the ayat. Where are those people who business, buying and selling, it didn't, keep, it didn't lead them astray. It didn't now disturb them. It didn't now make them beguiled. It didn't now make them not think about the prayer and think about the deen of Allah Ta'ala. Where are those people? La tulihim tijaratun wala bayun an dhikrillah. It didn't t- keep them away from prayers, any type of buying and selling business. They knew once the adhan was called, they came to the masjid, and nothing stopped them from that. Where are they? For yaqumun. Some will stand up. Wa hum qalilun. There'll be only a few. Allah Ta'ala will say, go to Jannah without hisab. Go. And the last one. Aina al-ladheena tatajafa janubuhum anil madhaji'i. Where are those people who used to keep their backs away from their beds at night and stand up and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nights and pray the tahajjud? Where are they? Fayaqumun. A few of them will stand up. Wahum qalilun. They're only a few. And it will be entered into Jannah bi ghayri hisab without any type of accountability. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this hadith, it is said after that, then they will go to Jannah, then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will start the hisab on the others. Now hisab will start. Those people who are free, they come in. Like when you go to, in the front of a store or something, who's VIP, or you have a card, okay, come in. Okay, now we'll start looking at the people who have to pay. Those who come in free first, the VIP, those who are special guests, you come first, then the other ones. So I'm trying to bring the point, the last one, tatajafa janubuhum, we should make sure that we pray our salat at night. Get up, two rakat nafu, I mean, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes. The ulama say, even if you can't get up for prayer, sometime in the night, get up, just lean up and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the nights, those duas are accepted. The next thing that is very, very important is the arafah. In the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, which will be next Thursday, it is a sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fast on the day of Arafah. This is one of the great fasts of the year. When Nabi sallam was asked about this fast, Nabi sallam said, Ahtasibu ala Allah. I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this fast, yukaffidu, he will, he will destroy and he will get rid of the sins of the year of the past, sins which were done of the years past. Wasanat alati qabla. And also the year in front as well. The year that is in front, Qabla Wabad, those years that are in front, meaning the sins you have not done already. Through this fast, Allah Ta'ala, the sins that are coming up next year, which you will definitely do, people will fall into sin, those will be forgiven as well. Through the fast of Arafah. So that's two years of sins which are forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just for keeping the fast, which these days is very easy. About 5.50, alhamdulillah, the Fajr comes in. Even the tahajjud, we can get up 5.30, alhamdulillah. And we can get the tahajjud in 20 minutes of tahajjud, you can pray. Then after that, 5.50 fajr starts. We can start our fast very easily. And then we know the fast is ending. By 6 o'clock, mashallah, you are eating and everything's done. So now that the zaman is also nice, we have cold weather also, very easy for us to do these amal and to involve ourselves in this. And then of course, there's the tadhiyah, the qurbani. How we can... Uh, sacrifice the animal which of course is binding on those people who have the istidat who have the money they are supposed to sacrifice an animal i left some pamphlets in the back also marcos al islam which works out of dal they have uh, the slaughtering also which they are doing in bangladesh many people of course need meat they also uh, and also the uh, lamb is not that expensive as well the lamb over there for one lamb is about 85 dollars and then if a person wants to take a share of a cow that would cost him only $55. So if anybody's interested, the pamphlet's there. You can make the phone calls within this next week. They will be sending the... Uh, anytime you want to call, you can call. And they will do the qurbani in Bangladesh for you. Uh, so we should make sure that we do the qurbani and the sacrifice as well. 
The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they were doing the sacrifice, they asked the Beast sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The hadith comes in Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi also. When they asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, ma hadhihi al-adahi? What is this slaughtering that we are doing? We're slaughtering these animals. What is this? So Nabi sallallahu gave the reply, Sunnah to Abikum Ibrahim. This is the practice of your Ruhani father, your spiritual father, and the leader of this ummah as well, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Our religion, our millah, is most connected to the way that Ibrahim alayhi salam practiced the deen, his deen. We are most close to him, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So this is the practice of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. And of course we know, what did Ibrahim alayhi salam do? The qissa is mentioned in the Quran. And the seriousness and the greatness of it is mentioned when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about, first of all, Ismail, his son, that when was Ibrahim told to slaughter this son of his? فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعْهُ السَّعِرِ when Ismail reached the age where he was able to walk with his father. Ulum of Tafsir say, meaning he was able to do the work with his father, able to cut some wood, go to the forest. Now we would say, he's able to come to me to the cell phone store and pay my bill. Right, I can take him out to the masjid, bring him with me, come back. When they're little kids, we can't do anything. We don't want to hold them. That's the mother's job. She can clean, fix the diaper. She can clean the diaper. But when a boy gets a certain uh, you know, age where he can walk, so now it's the fakhr and the proudness of the father. He gets proud and happy that, oh, my son, come. Let's go to the masjid. Or here in America, he'll give him the baseball glove and say, go, go out for a pass with the football, right? Now that's the age where now I can start teaching you football. And he becomes the coach now, the father. In the same way now, we start teaching him Quran. Sit with me. Come in the car with me. Come sit in front of my lap in the steering wheel. We can't do that here. But in Pakistan, you see the kids, they're sitting right in front. Forget about the car, the motorcycle also they're riding, right? In the other countries, they have the motorcycle also. So, this, this was a tender age of Ismail. Allah Ta'ala wants to show every father that this was not something small. This was not a disobedient child. This was not an older child. This was not a sick child. This was a child who was in his beautiful age when the father loves him. And also Ibrahim Alayhi age, the ulama say, was over 60 years old when he had. He was an old man. He was in his 90s when he had his haq. Ismail alayhi salam, he had him in a very old age also, at a time where he felt he was not going to have children. So this is his one beloved son that was given to him by Allah Ta'ala. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through a dream, is telling him to sacrifice his son. And through a dream, not even through wahi, this shows the obedience of Ibrahim alayhi salam. How he obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is how he got the name Hanif and Khalilullah. The friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that mera do sirf kuch ishara kare me karonga, right? That my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just give me an indication and I'm ready to do it. Just an indicate. It through a dream. I'm you're slaughtering your son. I'm ready to do it. Let's go. Ismail, what do you think about it? His son also, if al ma tu a nabi of Allah ta'ala, Halim Allah ta'ala calls him in Quran, he's a very forbearing and patient child. If Alma Tu'mar, do what you have been ordered, O my father. Satajiduni insha'Allah min as sabirin. First he says, If Alma Tu'mar, there that you know, when you worship Allah Ta'ala, the ulama say you have to be careful that none of that, you know, that haughtiness comes in you. Right? When a person comes for fajr, then he stops, he doesn't think about all the days that he missed fajr, he starts thinking about all the people not coming for fajr. Look at this, this empty masjid, where's everybody? No, oh, by worry about yourself. Inshallah, the others will come also. Give them targhib. We come for the salats and we start saying, no one's coming for the prayers. What are they doing? So Ismail alayhi salam said, Ifil ma tu umar, oh father, do what you have been ordered. But you will find me from Sataji dunu. Inshallah, he puts Allah first. You will find me, inshallah, min as sabirin from those people who bear patience. And we know that Ibrahim salam did this. He tried to slaughter his son. Allah Ta'ala made him pass this test and gave him the beautiful ram from Jannah. That was slaughtered. And Ismail and Ibrahim alayhi salam, they both uh, were kamiyab and both were victorious and they passed their test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ajib points some of the ulama mentioned that when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said sunnah to Ibrahim, sunnah to Abikum Ibrahim, when we look at the word sunnah, sunnah usually is understood 
that sunnah is something that is habitually done. The sunnahs of Nabi Wasallam, Not something he did only once, but something he repeatedly did. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, this was his sunnah, but it was not something he repeatedly did. He only did it once in his life. So some of the ulama put forward the question, that how can now you call this a sunnah, since it was only done once? So they give the reply, that the actual slaughtering, that's not really the sunnah which Allah was, ta- Rasulullah was talking about. But it's the fact that Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, they surrendered to the hukum and the order of Allah ta'ala. This was a salient feature that was in Ibrahim alayhi salam, his whole life from the cradle to the grave. He was always following the command of Allah ta'ala. Kana hanifa. Right? He was totally disinclined towards everything except the deen of Islam. Everything was Islam and Tawheed and the oneness of Allah Ta'ala. And so when Allah Ta'ala says when they slaughtered, He didn't say, فَدَبَهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ Ismail. He didn't say that. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا When both of them, they surrendered to the hukum of Allah Ta'ala, to the order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So from this we understand from this qissa, that why are we slaughtering these animals? Why are we doing this for? It's not really just about the meat. If it was about the meat, Allah Ta'ala would have never said, لا ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولاك يناله التقوى منكم It is not the meat and the blood that reaches Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that He needs some meat and blood from you. Na'udhu Billah, Allah Ta'ala is hungry. He needs some meat. That's why he sacrificed it. Like the people who used to think with the asnam, they used to sacrifice the animals and put it in front of them. Our asnam, our idols have to eat also. This is not the purpose. But the purpose is the taqwa and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah ta'ala has told you to slaughter those animals, you will slaughter those animals. Even if the governments around the world are saying that some meat is being wasted, we're still going to do it. Because the purpose is not the meat, the purpose is the hukum and the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the purpose is to know in our hearts that there is nothing, there is nothing more beloved to us than Allah ta'ala. This is the test of Ibrahim. That son which he loved so much, who was beloved, Allah Ta'ala wanted to see that do you love me more or do you love Ismail alayhi salam more? Who do you love more? That's what Allah Ta'ala says about the mu'mineen. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ الْأَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those people who believe they are supposed to be more in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than anything else at all. Nothing is supposed to be more beloved to them than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to do this qurbani, to understand this. That we have to follow the command of Allah Ta'ala no matter what. And that the mahabbat and the love in our heart has to be for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then after that, everything else. Then after that, everything else. First is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And of course, Ayami Tashriq is coming as well, which we will be making tashbih. All this is to be like those people in Hajj. We can't buy, be like the people in Hajj. So we try to be like them. The brothers giving the adhan, we can't be the more than, only one more than can be. So that's why after, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, we're saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, all I can't be the more than, let me repeat, at least be like him. In the same way, in these 10 days, we cannot be at Hajj. They, they fortunately are there, unfortunately we couldn't go this year. So therefore, from the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, uh, all the way to the 13th, the 9th, the Fajr, to the Asr of the 13th of the Hijjah. After every Salat, it is wajib upon us to say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. They're doing Talbiyah there repeatedly, we will do this here repeatedly. And also in these first 10 days, it is a Sunnah, may Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq, that... Uh, in the first 10 days before we do our qurbani, that we let our nails and we let our mustache and we let our beard grow. We don't cut any hair of the body and we don't cut our fingernails in these days. This is not because we are dirty. This is because we want to be like those people who are in ihram. They are in ihram, they cannot cut their nails, they cannot cut their mustache, they cannot cut their beard, they cannot put the itr, we can put the itr on, but they cannot do these different things in ihram I cannot be with them, so at least let me be like them. Man tashabbahu bi qawmin fahuwa minhum. Nabi Sama said, that person who tries to be like someone, insha'Allah, Allah Ta'ala will raise him amongst those people. 
So we ask Allah Ta'ala to raise us amongst those people who are at the Hajj. And they are leaving now. Ask them for their du'as. These people's sins will be forgiven there. Nabi Sama said they'll come back like newborn babies. So when they are there in front of Kaaba crying, and who knows what halat and condition they have in their heart, and what marifat and recognition of Allah Ta'ala they have achieved there through the Hajj, then we should ask them to make du'a. Like Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Umar bin Khattab anhu when he was going for Umrah, and he told Umar radiallahu anhu, لا تنسانا يا أخي في دعائكم Umar says, I went to him and I asked him permission. Can I go to Umrah, Ya Rasulullah? فَأَذِنَ لِي He gave me the permission. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Nabi of Allah Ta'ala, understanding first of all the greatness of Umar, and understanding the greatness of where he was going for Umrah, he's going to the Baytullah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in his very beautiful humbleness and his akhlaq, he said, لَا تَنْسَانَا فِي دُعَائِكُمْ يَا عُمَرْ يَا تَنْسَانَا يَا أَخِي فِي دُعَائِكُمْ don't forget us in your dua, O oh my brother, Umar Rilano. What was Umar's reply? These words that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to me, I wouldn't even trade them for the whole dunya. I was so happy that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asking me for dua. Allahu Akbar. So the people are going for hajj, we should first of all ask them, don't put the hundred dollars in their hand and say, get me this ithir and this topi and this thobe. And you're going to put them in problems now. They have a whole list and they're walking around the stores looking for some certain thobe that you want. A certain cup of light blue turquoise and it's a silk feeling and this, this, that. Don't go asking them these things. Leave that. Give them hundred dollars and give it sadaqah. When you see that person with no arm, no hand, give them hundred dollars, I can get the reward. Don't burden them with all these uh, you know, wish lists. Don't burden them with these things. But ask them, no, oh, my friend, make dua for me. Make dua for me. Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. Wa akhdam wa alhamdulillah. Wa alhamdulillah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة Bye.
الحمد لله الذي لولا لطفه ما اهتدينا ولولا فضله ما تصدقنا ولا صلينا ولا صمنا ولا ضحينا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله الذي أنزلت به السكينة علينا عليه أنفسنا وأهلنا فدينا ولولاه ما عرفنا الحق ولا درينا صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين شهدوا بدرا وحنينا أما بعد فقد حان ذو الحجة الحرام شرعت لنا فيها أحكام وأعظمها التضحية من بهيمة الأنعام وستذكر في خطبة عاشر هذه الأيام ومنها صيام العشر بمعنى تسع والقيام وكل عمل من شرائع الإسلام فقال فيها سيد الأنام عليه السلاة والسلام ما من أيام أحب إلى الله أن يتعبد له فيها من عشر ذي الحجة يعدل الصيام كل يوم منها بصيام سنة وقيام كل ليلة منها بقيام ليلة القدر لا سيما صوم عرفة التي قال فيها عليه الصلاة والسلام صيام يوم عرفة أحتسبوا على الله أن يكفر سنة التي قبله وسنة التي بعده ومنها التكبير دبر الصلوات المكتوبات وكان عبد الله رضي الله عنه يكبر من صلاة الفجر يوم عرفة إلى صلاة العسل من يوم النحر يقول الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد وكان علي رضي الله عنه يكبر بعد الصلاة الفجر يوم عرفة إلى صلاة العسل من آخر أيام التشريك ويكبر بعد الأصر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والفجر وليال عشر والشفع والوتر الحمد لله استعينه واستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل له فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي ساعه ما يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد وما يعص الله ورسوله فانه لا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وازواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحم امتي بامتي ابو بكر واشدهم في امر الله عمر واستقهم حياء عثمان واقضاهم علي وفاتمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة وصل الله وأصد رسوله اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغالر ذنبا رضوان الله عليهم أجمعين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمن بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون حكيم الصلاح